Time now for our rants and raves, starting with you, Dan. I have a rant for Apple. And the reason I have a rant for Apple is that Facebook, which we have criticized so many times, is trying to do the right thing and make it easy for newspaper publishers to uh, charge for subscriptions to their products within the Facebook environment. And it turns out that Apple is saying, well, if you're going to do it through the Apple Facebook app, we still want our 30% off, off the top. Absolutely. So when this program rolls out in a week or two, uh, it's only going to be featured on Android phones because Apple will not allow it unless they can take 30% of every subscription. 30%? They've always done wow. that. The reason the Boston Globe, when they came up with their uh, paid website a few years ago, uh, did it as a mobile website rather than an app was because they didn't want Apple getting their 30%. Hmm. Hmm. Good for them. All right, Lila. So my rave is for the White House press pool reporters who have injected a little bit of uh, additional detail in their coverage right now. So as you know, the, the pool reports used to go just to other news organizations, but they're actually public. And Gawker had put them all online starting a couple years ago, but they've really ramped it up. So now anyone and everyone can follow anything the press gets, anything, any notes they take. The pool, I mean, covering yeah. the president at WH Public Pool on Twitter. And it's just really fascinating. They're not editorializing, but they're definitely noting detail that maybe goes, 35 golf yeah, game again. <laughs> goes, goes before that. But, but it's things like so-and-so on the sidelines, four people, four people turn their backs on the motorcade. They noted, um, I believe it was yesterday, that someone in a lower window seemed to be offering a full moon. Um, and there's a <laughs> really, lot, I gotta start yeah, reading, a it, lot of It has been very detail. boring in the past. It has been really dry and boring in the past, but all of it's on the record. So some of it's That's a lot good. more than you think is worth uh, reading. And it's an interesting insight to what's really what it's really like to be in the back of the plane or in the motorcade. That's what happens when your motorcade goes by the bar stool offices. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Adam. Uh, I want to rave for a podcast that I just discovered, which is young yet, only one episode, but I think it has great promise. It's dedicated to the Heaven's Gate really? suicides in the late 90s, hosted by Glenn Washington, who's the guy who hosts that uh, public radio show, Snap Judgment. Again, I'm only one episode in. I'm always looking for a new fix. And this I find fascinating, as many of our viewers will remember, but not all of them. This was uh, one of the biggest yeah. mass suicides in American history, if not after, the biggest. After Jen Jones. Yeah. And these people yeah. thought that they were going to be, uh, I think, catch transported. A yeah, they, they, were they, they thought they were, they were going to go into Kana. heaven in outer in, in space. And, and they wore those thing, black robes and yeah, shoes. Yeah, shrouds were laid over them, very, very yeah. odd. And yeah. one of the things that I really love that the host is doing, he apparently grew up in some sort of apocalyptic strand of Christianity, and he is really working to show that it is possible for ordinary people to get swept up in something like this, or people who aren't that different than the rest of us, and to ultimately end up in this horrible point, which I think is a, a bold so editorial movement, and I think it's going to work. So is it on uh, Heaven's Gate, or does it have a wider It is cult? just on Heaven's Gate. It's a 10-part hmm. Podcast on How many people Gate. died in that thing? It's like 40? I want to say, I was going to say upper 30s. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I remember that story really well. But it's a good lesson. Magic carpet riders. They thought they were going to catch very, a very ride to Haley's Wild Tale. Yeah. All right, John. I've got a rave for Kevin Cullen, the Metro columnist for the Boston Globe. Uh, the genre of sort of the gritty, big city daily mm -hmm. columnist yeah. <laughs> who writes about the lives of working class mm -hmm. people uh, is a real art form. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't ever compare anyone to Mike Royko, arguably the greatest newspaper columnist of all time. But uh, Cullen at his best is Royko-esque mm -hmm. in the work that he does. He's been at it for a long time. He received the Nyan Award from uh, the Harvard Kennedy School, I believe the Shorenstein Center, and uh, a deserving choice for that. He does great work. He's had a couple of great ones just this week. Yeah, and, and, I his, look forward to his, and his yeah. work in the wake of the marathon bombings. Yeah. Uh, was uh, uh, just world class. Absolutely well deserved. Uh, he was one of the people who should have won a Pulitzer after the marathon bombings yeah. and, and didn't. Agreed. Agreed. And a UMass grad, I believe. Too. And a nice guy. And a great guy. <laughs> and a good guy, yes. <laughs> All right, finally tonight, I have a rave for Variety magazine, which came out this week. Finally, with a long overdue cover, this picture of Harvey Weinstein that says simply, Game Over. They may have been late to the game on this, but they're declaring it. And there was news out today that he's going to be banned from the Motion Picture Academy 
and they think so. They really believe that that is going to be the that's end a of hell of a cover. It, it was, wow. and it he is. looked really striking. evil. I mean, he's just, just that. Almost, remember that Time magazine of a sort of a distorted OJ? They mm. sort of did the same thing to him. Was that photoshopped or I think retouched? it looked a little touched to me. Don't yeah, you think so? I with think the lighting so and yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. but. Well, we shall see if that really does it or not. But this this is one of those stories that seems to have a never-ending bottom to it. So Yeah, and I can't remember another story where there were this many incredibly damaging revelations in this short a success, you know, succession. Just boom, boom, boom. I, I don't mm. see how well, we can. Um, the, the New York Times op-ed today from Lupita. The actress yes, from, from oh, 12 Years a Slave. Wow. It's harrowing. It gives detail, yeah. but it also gives some good in insight. A lot of people ask, why would you put yourself in that situation? She, she points it. out in acting... What's intimate is also is, the line is blurred between public and private. I mean, you don't shoot a love scene in a vacuum. <laughs> if if he hadn't made his move on her while his kids were in the oh. house, well, she was who knows right. how that might have turned out? I don't know that That's the words true. love and Harvey go together. Right. That is it for our show.